So in my seven years of using an iPad Pro as my main computer, it seems like we can all agree on one thing when it comes to the iPad, is that people absolutely love the hardware. The thinness, the futuristic form factor, the versatility of it all makes it so the iPad is an extremely appealing piece, again, of hardware. But a lot of people think that iPad OS really limits the power of this M4 iPad Pro. And over the last couple years, I found ways to make my iPad give me this Mac OS-like experience while still getting the best of the iPad and iPad OS. Let me show you exactly what I do. So before we get into how I do this, let's talk about the why. Why would I go and spend money on an iPad Pro to make it and get a more Mac-like experience when I could just go out and buy a MacBook Air for like $900? And the key reason here for me is going to be versatility of the iPad Pro. Being able to have it in tablet mode, being able to create things with handwriting, being able to use the Apple Pencil Pro, having the best display on the market when it comes to pretty much any device with that tandem OLED, the thinness, the form factor, the Magic Keyboard, these are all things that for me go over and supersede what I get out of Mac OS and I'm willing to deal with kind of the trials and tribulations of dealing with iPad OS. And again, like I've said, I've pretty much mastered iPad OS and how I use it in my workflow. So for me, this has always been a net positive of being able to use my iPad Pro as my main computer from everything from work to personal and everything in between. So now let's get into the iPad. I'm going to show it on the screen right here because I want to show off exactly how I set it up from a UI perspective. We're not going to talk about applications or anything like that. This is purely going to be an aesthetic that I've put together to be able to make it feel like I'm jumping into a Mac OS desktop. But again, of course, this is still on the iPad. So the first thing I wanted to bring back was that today view. If you guys remember with iPad OS 13, when Apple first gave us that first version of iPad OS, they gave us a today view, which is this little glanceable look that you could actually pin to your home screen, which gave you little widgets, gave you the weather, your calendar. It was just a more watered down version of the current widgets that we have today, but in a more kind of static look where it always lived on the left side of your iPad screen when you held it in landscape and portrait orientations. And I absolutely loved the today view and I always kept it pinned. So when Apple finally gave us a little bit more freedom with iPadOS 18 to have our applications and widgets sit around pretty much anywhere on the display, I immediately moved over all my main widgets to that left hand side to replicate that today view because I like being able to have all that information to me at a glance. So now I have this open area of my iPad with the today view on the left, my applications and my dock and that open space on the iPad display really gives you a sense of having a desktop computer as opposed to having a bunch of different applications because on my Macs I keep just my dock and then a few files on the right or left hand side and then I'm good to go when it comes to keeping it as minimal as possible. And now I do want to talk about some setting tweaks that I put together on iPad OS to again give me that feeling of Mac OS while still keeping and being able to use all the pros of iPad OS and the iPad Pro. So the first thing is going to be in the settings for the home screen and app library. So I actually like to reduce the amount of things that I have kind of variable on my dock and be able to fill it out with only the applications that I use on a day to day basis. So I actually turn off the show app library in the dock and then I also turn off the show the suggested and recent apps in dock because for me it's a little bit redundant most of the applications that are recent are going to be in my dock anyway and then also if they're not there they're probably going to be on my home screen and lastly i can just do command spacebar to search for the applications that i do want to see so i don't have pages and pages and pages of applications i only have my main applications on my dock in my home screen and then everything else kind of sits hidden in the app library whenever i need it which again is going to be very similar to how most people run mac os and the next thing I do is that I like to have Stage Manager on by default. Every now and then I turn it off because Split View sometimes can be a little bit more productive, but when I am getting set up and I do need to have a bunch of floating windows sitting around, Stage Manager is turned on 80% of the time. So again, I turn off the recent apps, I turn off the dock, which means again, it's gonna give me a much bigger canvas when I am using my floating windows on my 13 inch M4 iPad Pro. And I can always pull them up very easily by swiping up from the bottom or swiping back from the left to get all the different recent apps whenever I need to. But again, this is gonna be the best form of multitasking on the iPad. You can have the four floating windows at the same time. You can have four sets of four floating windows and applications. So you can have up to 20 applications open simultaneously. You can have multiple instances of the same application depending on the app. So again, Stage Manager has gotten much, much better since it was released in iPadOS 16. And if you haven't tried it since then, for me, it is the main way that I use my iPad Pro. Like again, I'm using it right now to have my viewfinder open on the Blackmagic camera app, my settings open, and then of course other things that I have like the notes application and files all open right in front of me. So now before we dive into the hardware that I use to give me this Mac OS like experience on the iPad, I do want to shout out our sponsor Paperlike for always supporting the channel and a quick word from them. 
The Paperlike Screen Protector was actually the very first accessory I ever bought for my original 2018 iPad Pro. It absolutely changed the way I use my iPad, giving me that real paper feel right on my screen, and it's been almost seven years and I still make sure that I have one for all of my iPads. I recently got the new iPad Mini 7 and I knew I needed to throw a paper-like screen protector on there because it just adds a whole new dimension with how I engage with the iPad Mini. Paperlike's Nano Dot Tech gives you the natural resistance of paper, letting you take neater notes, draw with precision, and even makes the sound of pencil on paper. Combine that with the new haptics of the Pencil Pro, and you have a match made in heaven. It is made for creators and doers, it's perfect for artists, designers, students, or anyone who wants the real paper experience in their digital workflow. And with its micro bead tech, Paperlike keeps your screen clear and near glare free, making it as beautiful to look at as it is to write on. Not only do they give you two Paperlikes on there just in case you mess up, but they also are so confident in their product that they offer a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. So if you're ready to fall in love with writing on your iPad, give Paperlike a try with the link below. And now back to this iPad Pro. So for the most part, I do stick to first party accessories when it comes to the iPad Pro because it's gonna give you the ultimate experience and how Apple intended it to be used. Of course, the Magic Keyboard right now is $350, which is kind of absurd because you can literally get the iPad 10th generation for that same price, which is an entire iPad, of course. But again, if you wanna have that feel and look of a Magic Keyboard and the look and feel of a laptop, especially with the updated version with that aluminum finish, the Magic Keyboard is going to be the way to go. There are other companies like Logitech that make a trackpad that works well, even ESRs works well. But again, if you want to have the absolute best experience, then the Magic Keyboard is going to be the way to go. But I'll link those other ones as good, cheaper alternatives down below. But again, immediately after you slap on the Magic Keyboard, this feels like a completely different device, and that's what turns it into a laptop for me in my eyes. The trackpad is amazingly responsive, gesture control is there. The trackpad basically acts as an extension of the actual touchscreen, so you still have the ability to actually touch the screen and use it that way, but if you wanna use your trackpad which is closer to you to make it more efficient, that is gonna be the best way possible. It also works with external mice, so I have used the Logitech Anywhere S2 before. It works great with the Magic Mouse and it works great with the external first party Apple Magic trackpad. But again, if you do wanna use an external mouse, you're more than welcome to. And then of course, I also have an Apple Pencil Pro, which we'll touch on a little bit because again, the Apple Pencil Pro just adds and elevates the iPad Pro experience over a Mac OS experience. And then if you really wanna go all in when it comes to using your iPad Pro as a Mac, you can use it with an external display. Just plug in a Thunderbolt display or plug in any kind of dongle, whether it's HDMI, DisplayPort, and then it'll scale to any display that you use. I use it with my 5K BenQ monitor, which scales perfectly and works amazingly well with the iPad Pro, and being able to have that and then have extended displays. So I'm able to have one thing happening on my iPad Pro, another thing happening on the external display, exactly like you would on a Mac OS computer. Okay, so now that we have the iPad set up from both a hardware and software perspective, I did wanna give a little bit of kind of tips and tricks on how I use multitasking to my advantage. Because again, the Mac OS and iPad OS multitasking is relatively different, especially visually and how you actually interact with it. On the surface, it might look kind of the same because they're just floating windows, but they do act a little bit differently since the iPad is a touch first interface and has always been that. So again, with Stage Manager, you can have the four different applications open at the same time. You can resize them. But one thing to note is that depending on the application, the resizability kind of changes a little bit. So for something like an X application or Slack or something that is made to be in this kind of iPhone look, you can have pretty much infinite types of sizes when it comes to resizing it. You have like the iPhone version, which is when you make it as small as possible. Then you have, you can make it a little bit larger to have the iPad version. And then finally you can go fully full screen. There are some other applications that are pretty much just the iPad specific applications that won't go as small as an iPhone app and vice versa. So do keep that in mind, but overall, Sizeability is something that you have to play with and works on an app by app basis. But once you know what applications work, once you know which applications you use most often, and once you know which ones can be resized to which size, it'll be much easier for you to kind of navigate that and manage all those resizable windows. And then like I said, every now and then, probably 20 to 30% of the time, I actually go back and turn off Stage Manager and go into Split View. And this is actually how I run it when I am using an extended monitor. So when I am using an extended monitor, on the physical iPad, I'm running a Split View multitasking. And then on the extended monitor, I am running Stage Manager because again, I have much more screen real estate. And then when it comes to split view i actually love that because it gives you two side by side kind of ipad mini size windows of two specific ipad applications in their full ipad app form 
And then of course you have slide over. So if you want to open up a iPhone size application to then put over one of those two applications that's in split view, it's very easy to do that. And again, you can manipulate these each, get, grab data from one, move it to the other, have multiple instances of Safari and things like that. So overall, being able to master each multitasking situation over time as you learn to use the iPad is going to give you, in my opinion, a better experience multitasking wise than even Mac OS. And the last piece of advice I'm going to give when it comes to multitasking and stage manager, it is a little bit different because obviously with Mac OS, if you do open up an application from your dock, that window just appears over the other windows that you already have on your display. When it comes to stage manager, if you do have maybe two or three windows open in stage manager view, you go to your dock and tap on an application. Those three windows will then go away and then that new application will be the only application in front of you. If you do want to move that application and add it to the current set of multitasking applications that you have, you actually have to hold it down and drag it into that display or that area where the other ones are. And then you'll be able to have that fourth window open and that application will open. A little bit weird, a little bit counterintuitive because when you're not in stage manager mode, if you do hold down an application and move it, you're in wiggle mode and now you're moving around the actual physical application as opposed to the windowed application. But again, Apple, they do have to figure that out from an experience standpoint, in my opinion. I think there should be some other mechanism to opening up that application. But I have realized that my best friend is going to be the spotlight shortcut, which is just going to be command spacebar in order to search for applications that aren't on your dock. Because if they're not on your dock, you will not be able to pull them into the multitasking window. That's where that command space comes into play. And you can just look up the application you want that's in your app library and then drag it into the space below. And then you're going to be multitasking and have that floating window. So again, little nuanced things that you should learn as you go along to make yourself as efficient as possible. And then lastly, it's going to be all about the applications that you use and how well they work on the iPad. Because of course, you do have a bunch of iPad dedicated applications and depending on which app they are and which brand is being used and things of that nature, some of the iPad apps can be kind of watered down compared to their Mac OS or desktop counterpart. I have seen that people have said something like Microsoft Excel doesn't work as well on the iPad, even though I could make the argument that it works amazingly on the iPad and I have before. But again, if you are a master Excel user and you need all the little tidbits, maybe the desktop version is a little bit better. So I would say that you do have to go on an app by app basis and make sure that your application works. But again, on the other side of it to kind of bridge that gap, first off, iPad applications are fantastic. They're optimized well. And for the most part, and for most people will be more than enough. And that Microsoft Excel example, for me, that Microsoft Excel actually works wonders. I can have multiple instances of that application, manipulate the data back and forth, create pivot tables, have a bunch of different sheets in there that correspond to each other. But again, if that didn't work, then I would just go to their web version. I would go to the Safari version. I would go to the Chrome version because I can request the desktop like version, which is exactly what you get when you are opening up Mac OS or anything on there. And again, I bounce between both of them between Safari and Chrome. I tend to go to Safari a little bit more on the iPad, but again, they work well. Just figure out which one you like best and which one I guess you're signed into and have all your bookmarks synced across all your devices and things like that. But at the end of the day, definitely try out if it doesn't work on the iPad app, try it on the web app version and 99% of the time it works great. And before we wrap the video, definitely consider subscribing to the channel below because it helps motivate us to make more videos like this one. And my goal here is to get as many people to jump on the iPad over something like a MacBook Air over time. And I think we're doing that little by little. And then to continue on, I do want to mention that the superpower of the iPad is again, the versatility because obviously we're making this kind of like a tablet, Mac OS computer, lookalike, laptop thing, depending on what your situation is, you know, this could be your main computer, but also it's a tablet. Secondly, it's a note taking device. You can hand write on here. You can play games on here. You can connect your Xbox controller and game a little bit, whether it is on device or cloud gaming. So the versatility of the iPad is unmatched because you can put it in pretty much any environment in any form factor. And that's why I think I love the iPad so much. It's just a much more fun device to use than a boring traditional laptop design that has been around since the 1980s, I think. So it's been almost 50 years since we've changed that form factor. And again, it's an amazing computer. Those MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros. I have a Mac mini that I use from time to time, but my iPad Pro is my favorite and most used computer because I like to pull it out and just have more fun using it. And I'm willing to deal with some of those downfalls, which I do want to mention to round off this video, because again, it's not all perfect. So iPadOS is a frictionful learning curve if you are trying to use it as your main computer. Stage Manager could be a little bit clunky or and definitely was when it first came out. It's gotten a lot better, but Stage Manager could be a little bit tough to get used to if you are very used to just using macOS over and over again. There are some limitations when it comes to audio sources and stuff like that. So you can only have one audio source playing at one time. 
coming out of the iPad because it's still basically iOS from that front. You can't have two audio sources playing on your iPhone, so you can't do that on the iPad either. Some of the iPad apps have been iPadified, like I mentioned earlier, so they're just a little bit more watered down overall compared to their desktop-like counterpart. But again, my argument would be that there are millions of iPad applications out there at your disposal versus just a few thousand dedicated Mac apps from the Mac App Store. And then lastly, there's something about the file system where everything works, right? You can still move files around, have two windows open, manage your files, copy them, paste them, manipulate them, delete them. You can still do everything that you would on the Finders app, but there's something about it that isn't as intuitive about the Finders app. And leave a comment down below if you can pinpoint it, but I can't put my finger on exactly what it is. The Files app just feels a little bit more playful and I mean that in a negative way and that's the only time I'm going to mention that compared to the Finder app. I wish the Finder app would just be ported over to the iPad and we would figure something out but the Files app works, it works as intended and it's never given me any issues. It's just something about it adds a little bit of friction and I just don't like it as much as the Finder's application. And I know that I'm not alone on that. But that's gonna do it for this video everybody. I just wanted to show off how I set up my iPad both physically and software wise how I use it, why I use my iPad the way that I do, and why I don't just jump over to a MacBook Air to use as my daily driver, because again, I love the iPad, I love the form factor, the versatility is there, and I can do more overall on the iPad than I can on the Mac, because again, touch first interface, it can be used as a content consumption machine, the display is fantastic, and Apple Pencil support, the Magic Keyboard is awesome. There's just a lot to like about the iPad that really supersedes, like I mentioned in the beginning, all the downfalls of iPad OS. And you can overcome those downfalls by tweaking things here and there from a UI perspective to make it just that much more easy for you to use. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. How do you use your iPad? Do you like this kind of situation that I put into the iPad? Or do you think I'm kind of forcing a round peg into a square hole? Let me know in the comment down below, but if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these right here because it looks like iPadOS 19 is actually coming to the forefront. And if you want to learn how to use Stage Manager like a pro, also click on this video. Peace, everybody.